discussions of the other common bacterial diseases in birds. Uh, we all know there are two important bacterial diseases exist in animals for which we usually go for vaccination. You all know uh, one is your HS, Amarji Septicemia, another is BQ. So these two important bacterial diseases are really a problem in animals, more specifically in the cattle, buffaloes, sheep and goats. So the counterpart of the disease of Pasteurella or HS and BQ or clostridial infections also exist in bats. Those two DTGs many times also are encountered. So the same uh, type of uh, features with little bit variation you may find in bats. So let us go for uh, uh, pasteurellosis or avian pasteurellosis or foul cholera, which is also another important disease. I'm sharing my slide. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Full screen. I guess so. so this is very uh, common many times pastorella maltosera, which is popularly called as foul cholera. Besides Arsenia pseudotuberculosis, Remerella anatipestifa, also uh, coming under this group. But we will be more concerned for uh, pastorella maltosera. As you know, this bacteria again like E. coli, it is present everywhere. Omnipresent, again, an opportunistic bacteria uh, at any time also this disease can crop up in animals and also at the same time also in the bats. Again, uh, this disease is having very wide distribution. All species of bats are susceptible. Adults are more frequently affected. And again, the most important is specifically why we are so worried for pastorellosis in animals because they come in a very virulent and highly septicemic form. So that's why the disease is called hemorrhagic septicemia, a paracute form. So you will not get time for treatment also. You will not get time for diagnosis of the disease. Very, very high paracute form of the disease is a little bit serious in nature. And again, the disease comes in a very septicemic form. So mortality will be almost very high. And very simple also to diagnose on the basis of the characteristics of the etiological agent. A pastorella, maltosida, gram negative bacteria, a bipolar organism, just like ant, and a very non motile, non spore forming bacteria. But very easily you can diagnose, even you can take from heart blood, you can take smear from heart blood in a dead bar. You can make a smear, you can go for gram stain, you can very easily demonstrate gram negative bipolar organism even without culture. If you go for culture, you will get plenty of bacteria. Even without culture also, you can demonstrate the bacteria. But the pathological features are very important so that you can suspect a disease like this. Pasturella maltosida, maltosida in chicken, pasturella maltosida, abyseptica. So these are mostly organisms are susceptible to drying, cold and derivatives and other disinfectants. So if any bacteria is susceptible to drying or disinfectants, then it is a very good thing. Because we can control the disease very easily. This bacteria will be removed from the cells easily with application of antiseptics. Even sunlight. So in that way, though there are very high number of serotypes, the disease is very highly pathogenic sometimes also uh, comes in a severe way, but again, to kill the bacteria, outside the host is very easy. And sometimes outside the body of the host, sometimes survivor of the natural outbreaks, those bars which are 
survivor, those who do not die also, they can carry the disease. Uh, clinically diseased poultry and their existence and dead birds are most important. They, are, they become the source of infection for others. Clinically affected birds, their excretions and dead birds. And obviously, water will be contaminated, meat also will be contaminated. Even sometimes also, it is not a vertically transmitted disease, very highly horizontally transmitted disease. Uh, infection will be through any route. The bacteria can pass through oral, nasal, or conjunctival route uh, to the body, and the pathogenesis can be initiated. So we should not give chance for further infection in Nepal, for which the dead virus should be removed from the shed as early as possible. You should not delay because people usually neglect to remove the dead virus, the clinically affected virus. Again, also, this is a very important biosecurity measure how to separate or isolate the clinically affected virus, clinically affected virus. Isolation of the virus, removal of the dead virus are very, very important aspect in control of the disease. And again, you know that the disease, which is very paracute in nature, you may not find any signs, you may not find any pathological lesions, but if it is acute in nature, you will find some discharges from the orifices, bluishness, discoloration, bluish discoloration of the carcass, depressed, pitted diarrhea, diarrhea, pitted diarrhea, because you know, in pastoralosis, what are the most important clinical signs and pathologies, which organ are more important in case of pastoralosis in animals? Can anybody tell me? Which organ specifically in case of pastoralosis in a cattle we will look for during postmortem examination? Lungs. Lungs. Very good. Then. And intestine, it is mostly hemorrhagic septicemia will come in the form of pneumoenteritis, pneumonia and enteritis. So here also you will find diarrhea, respiratory distress, and sometimes also you will find swelling of the vitals. So where you will find the lesions? You will find the lesions. Since it is a septicemic in nature, please remember, a septicemic characteristic is mostly, you will find a generalized congestion and petechial hemorrhages throughout the viscera, subepicardial fat, multiple necrotic foci in the liver. So all these are very, very septicemic characters, multiple organ hemorrhages, and necrotic foci and necrotic patches in the liver, generalized congestion in almost all the organs are very, very important characteristic of Septicemia, where, where you will find that also in poor acute and acute form. Besides pneumonia, periapatitis, and sometimes also you will find arthritis in the hog joints, as you already we discussed in case of salmonella, there will be arthritis here also in this case also you may find. And the swelling of the wattles, again you, you have, have already witnessed swelling of the wattles in case of coriza, here also you will find swelling of the wattles. So you have to differentiate very critically. I will differentiate that. For differentiation, we will come to the picture, but now diagnosis exists where? Diagnosis exists on the clinical signs, diagnosis exists on the gross lesions, specifically pneumonia, enteritis, uh, cyanosis, necrotic foci, generalized congestion, petechial hemorrhages on the epicardium, and more specifically, you can demonstrate the causal organism. You can take impression smear from the liver, impression smear from the heart blood, even also in a pneumonic form, you can also take impression smear from the lungs. So these are three important uh, area from where you can collect and you can demonstrate the bacteria. But gross lesions like pneumonia, enteritis, cyanosis, exudates, petechial hemorrhages, necrotic patches, all are also contributed for a diagnosis. So this is swelling of the vitals. For this is swelling of the vitals, if you find, if you open it, you will find pause. You will not find in a, in a coriza case, you will not find pus, you will find fluid. But here you will find some suppurative fluid. What a lapses, it is a what a lapses. 
and purulent also purulent synovitis you are in earlier case you are, you are finding fluid in the hog joint but here you will find purulent fluid in the hog joint so you can also very clearly differentiate pale black exudates right from a case of staphylococcus synovitis with the more yellow tinge granulosa is obtained in case of so what is there in case pastorella you will find little bit more yellow yellow exudates in the hog joint but little bit pale yellow or pale white in case of staphylococcus because synovitis is very common in staphylococcus pastorella and in case of salmonella you will not find any pale or yellow you will find clear edema fluid sometimes in case pastorella you will find peritonitis but most important is since there is pneumonia blood stained mucus in the mouth bloody exudates because of septicemia and pneumonia that you can find and pneumonia is very simple to diagnose because in a lungs once you palpate it the consistency will be very hard sometimes there will be pleura is very much thickened even if you cut fluid will come out from the cottages those are very very characteristic features in pneumonia which are clearly evident in case of avian pastorellosis again the lung histology showing a lot of organisms colonies of organisms and retrophilic infiltration these are all bacterial colonies all macrophages retrophils so cellular accumulation and bacterial clumps so i think this is your about pastorella which you can very well examine very well diagnose on the basis of its septicemic character and a pneumoenteritis which will help you for diagnosis but never underestimate or ignore this disease because pastorella is again a very common inhabitant in the environment looking for the favorable environment in the host both in animals and birds so similarly clostridial infection pastorella and clostridia are very very important pathogen specifically in livestock and poultry will go for clostridial infection is it visible yes sir so clostridia you know there are various clostridial organisms but in general they are large gram positive anaerobic bacteria capable of producing spore so you please remember a spore forming anaerobic bacteria is a characteristic where they are very much resistant to climatic conditions you know that a spore forming bacteria is very resistant to normal climatic conditions or common disinfectants so it is very difficult to remove the spores from the environment specifically from the soil and dust even in lower intestinal tract of ours which is ubiquitous so a spore forming bacteria and anaerobic bacteria is very because a spore forming bacteria very very difficult to remove and at the same time the bacteria also grow in anaerobic environment means mostly in the deep muscles where the bacteria can grow very easily in the deep muscles you cannot do anything you cannot any apply anything also to remove from an anaerobic environment where the bacteria grow in the host and again then they look for a, uh, they look they look for a for a time usually 
this force will remain for a long time even for more than 40 20 years immediately after a shower they will vegetate and they will be infected so very very common you know that botulism clostridium botulinum ulcerative enteritis by clostridium colinum necrotic enteritis by clostridium porphyrogens and more important is gangrenous dermatitis by clostridium porphyrogens or clostridium septicum which is mostly mostly more related to your dq in animals dq in animals if having similar to the gangrenous dermatitis in birds caused by clostridium porphyrogens besides this botulism is very very common in birds as i was discussing that some of the birds also die due to limber neck or botulism because clostridium botulinum is mostly present in the decayed carcass lot of lot of birds die mostly flying birds migratory birds they die in large numbers due to botulism botulism or limber neck very easy because you can see from outside also uh, bent is uh, bending of the neck flexibility of the neck we have seen many times lot of birds usually the flying birds come for post mortem after rescue and with the, all these clinical features history of clinical features and post mortem findings of limber leg they are able to produce eight different types of toxins type a b e are common in humans toxins are usually found in decaying poultry carcasses containing maggots or beetles toxins are also produced by bacterial growth in rotting vegetations it is not that only you will find this bacteria in a decaying carcass but in rotting vegetations decayed vegetative vegetations greens so agricultural products those which are rotten which are not de uh, decomposed properly there also you will find the bacteria the disease is reported all over the world it's rare in domestic poultry as you know that because domestic poultry may not get a chance to consume these decayed carcass so you will not find in domestic poultry but in mostly you will find in the birds which are remaining outside so the carcasses should be properly disposed if it is not the birds those who are dying if they are not properly disposed there may be a source of infection for other flying birds other outside birds even the animals also it is a very acute disease for which it is incubation period is one to two days so very clear limber neck a paralysis with incoordination which starts first with legs then to wings and neck followed by a flaccid paralysis flaccid paralysis means loss of tonicity of muscles of neck with lack of force within few hours of ingestion of toxin Feathers in the neck area become loose and easily shed. No specific gross lesions are observed except diarrhea and presence of putrid ingesta. You can see the putrid ingesta or maggots in the crop. Crop is very important organ to examine toxicity, poison, type of feed. Even this is this crop contents are very important for forensic examination because whatever is ingested, they remain fresh in the crop, which can be exploited. for the examination of the contents with respect to toxin with respect to any bacterial infection even sometimes also malicious poisoning people con complain so crop materials are very very important for examination for a forensic examination more specifically here even also for this bacteria even if you suspect that this this bar has taken rotten feed rotten vegetation or any decayed uh, decomposed carcass that can be known from the crop materials so during post mortem examination crop is to be crop is to be ingest, uh, examined very easily and you can know that so very clearly uh, diagnosis can be done so uh, sample should be collected from the fresh carcass or living birds since toxins are produced in decaying tissues normally 
So you have to take the extracts of crop, gastrointestinal content, laboratory mice also can be experimented for immediate death. So very difficult also sometimes because those, uh, those bacteria which produce toxins, very difficult to examine. You, you, because you will not find the culture, specifically cultural examination is very difficult because it is, you need a anaerobic environment for cultural examination of these clostridial species. So normal cultural examination is not applied here in case of clostridial examination. At the same time, they produce exotoxins. So you will not find bacteria after a few times. Then again, another important aspect or entity of a clostridia that is necrotic entry is very, very common nowadays. The disease most common in the broilers. Clostridia perpetual type ASC toxins, organic are present in large intestine, Zika, and predisposing factor, any bacteria, parasite, or anything which affects the intestine, then clostridium perpetual will make more harm. Coxidia, onigenic management, sudden changes in the diet will contribute for aggravation of this, and you will find a necrotic enteritis. Thickening of the small intestine frequently velvet like appearance. You please remember, necrotic enteritis has become very common because of clostridia, and you will diagnose very easily by seeing this mucosa of the intestine look like a velvet, velvet like appearance. You see the surface. Necrotic mucous membrane is fissured. There is a fissure, cracks in the mucosa of the intestine. We have also seen many cases necrotic enteritis, thickened intestine. Wall is thickened with, with necrotic fissure, velvet like appearance of the mucosal surface. Necrotic enteritis. And again, you can demonstrate the gram positive bacteria also, gram positive bacilli. Necrosis of the inner part. Inner, histologically also you can see the disformation of the small intestine. Numerous, numerous gram-positive organisms are also demonstrated in the tissue section of the intestine. These are all small, small gram-positive bacteria. Uh, kidneys are also showing some nephritic lesions. Mostly they, they will be a little bit more granular. Intense congestion of the liver. So another important form, Clostridium polynum, ulcerative enteritis. Specifically, it is it is it is so not so important and very specific in quails. So that's why it is called quail disease. Same same type of lesions, ulcers in the intestine. You may remember it: ulceration and hemorrhages, necrosis in the intestinal mucosa, and sometimes also you will find in the liver some necrotic lesions, large spleen and hemorrhage. But please remember, one is ulcerative enteritis, quail disease, another is necrotic enteritis. These are also two important things. And another is limber neck. But most important is again, you can we consider it as a counterpart of BQ in case of birds, gangrenous dermatitis. A lot of birds will die simply due to gangrene. Clostridia will cause so severe fatal changes. You will find gangrene. These are the gangrene in wings, wet inflamed skin on the wings. Even sometimes gelatinous and sanguinous fluid also you will find below the skin. You see the, you, just you remove the skin, you see the skeletal muscle. Just over the muscle, you will find some serosanguinous gelatinous fluid. So in BQ, you are finding muscle hemorrhage in case of animals. Similarly, you find gangrene in the skin and also that extend up to the muscle, subcutaneous region. So these are all about clostridia.
and next we can also uh, another two important common one is your uh, mycoplasma i told you mycoplasma mycoplasma is also a very common avian mycoplasma is a special bacteria we all know that can you tell me what is the counterpart of mycoplasmosis in animals ke koibo koi paribo cbpp very good cbpp and cccpp cccpp in goats and cbpp in cattle so similarly also you you also know because farmers usually very this is very common why because farmers usually complain sir my birds are suffering from crd very popular disease crd so a gargling sound ghara 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 sound jora habo se mane se jani debe je it is a crd but it is caused by avian mycoplasma so mycoplasma galliceptikum mycoplasma synovia mycoplasma meliagradis mycoplasma eoa these are four important species which affect uh, and commonly uh, combinedly called as avian mycoplasmosis so crd mycoplasma galliceptikum is crd chronic respiratory disease special group of bacteria because it, you know that mycoplasma is not as usual like e coli or salmonella or your any pastoral like that it needs a special cultural media for its growth why because they are they are what because of their characteristics they cannot grow in this specific uh, ordinary media so they need a specific so that's why like people say it is a pplo pleuro pneumonia like organism media pplo media but organisms are very fragile you just imagine which bacteria are fragile which bacteria are resistant if you remember that then that will be helpful to you to remove this bacteria from the shed for future control this bacteria is very fragile you can remove it so you can suggest yes now you are apply antiseptics disinfectants from bat to bat this disease can be transmitted uh, wind borne transmission through infected eggs everything is possible here and mostly it is a respiratory sneezing moist rails breathing through partly open beaks and a gargling sound you please remember this much at least so most common clinical signs are related to disease of respiratory tract nasal discharges sneezing moist rails breathing through partly open beaks with gargling sounds and respiratory distress and cough if you remember this much then your your this disease is diagnosed your crd or mycoplasma galliceptica if you want you can go for a special media for its growth and cultural examination but farmer is telling you sir my birds are suffering from crd on the basis of gargling sounds so grossly also you can find thickening and edema of the air sac obviously air sacs will be thick cartilage exudates in the nasal passages trachea and bronchi these are common cloudy appearance of the air sacs and sometimes it is complicated with e coli i have told several times e coli and mycoplasma they come together very very common e coli and mycoplasma common come together so mycoplasma why i am telling mycoplasma will not respond to common antibiotics it needs a special type of antibiotics like tylosin timotin these are specific antibiotics required for control of this disease for treatment so if you see only e coli you may not control you may not treat but if you see that it is, is a mixed infection of e coli and mycoplasma treatment will be different histopathologically you will find mononuclear cells and hyperplasia of the mucous glands of trachea bronchi and oviduct thickened air sac with inflammatory cells pneumonia and a lymphofollicular reaction in the lungs very easily you can diagnose by enriched media where they appear as small round glistening colonies so this colony is very special mycoplasma colony in a special media will give a just like a button shaped nipple shaped colonies very specific and others test like hhi pcr elisa also you can go 
and all these things can be diagnosed. You see, this is mycoplasma galliseptic. Where you find the air sac is thickened. Here you see the air sac arrow. Even sometimes also exuded in the intraorbital sinus, swelling of the uh, sinus, pneumonia in the lungs. Then your mycoplasma sinovae. Again, this is again arthritis. So you now find this is another disease where you will find arthritis and joint infection. Mycoplasma sinovae. Arthritis form. Swelling of the home joints. Presence of thick, creamy to gray colored exudates in the synovial sac. You remember this much. Arthritis form. Joints reveal atrophic cell infiltration. Fibrin. Hyperplasia leading to villi formation of synovial membranes. So you have to differentiate it from other diseases where you will find synovitis like Staphylococcus, Pasteurella, Salmonella, and Rheoviral infections. So I told this type of joint infection in all these diseases, here also you find that. So differential diagnosis is very important. You have to look for that. Swelling of the joints. Swelling of the joints, you have to see that the fluid then the mycoplasma meliagradis, of course, it is not so common. You, you will find mostly deformation of the cervical vertebrae. It is not so common. So vertebrae. You will find the legs of the turkey, mostly a deformity of the hub joint. You will find a deformity. It is not so common. Pondiotystrophy, uh, tarsometastasis specifically, you will find that. You should not be so much worried for this disease. It is not so common. And mostly the it is mostly in the bones, skeleton. Mycoplasma EOA also they are in the turkey. You don't worry for that. But first two, three are more important. Then lastly, I'll take another two minutes. Besides, there is also another important strepto and staphylococcal infection. Staphylococcal infections. Staphyl Do you know strepto and staphylo are omnipresent? Admission number, admission number, message box, those who are present. So, staphylococcal infection, you know, it is a gram positive cocci, ubiquitous. So, they will cause mostly what type of thing? Gangrenous dermatitis. Again, that means it is with clostridia, it may be arthritis, yolk sac infection, subnormal abscess, septicemia, spondylitis, osteo. So, you see, staphylococcus is coming in different entities. So arthritis, you know, here also you will find arthritis, same type, but you will find mostly pus. Staphylococcus is a superative bacteria. So you will find abscess with pus. So there will be bumble foot. Bumble foot. These are the bumble. This is called bumble foot because of staphylococcus. If you caught this, you will find only pus. Sometimes also it will it will be necrotic patches. These are the colonies, clumps of bacteria present in the liver. So staphylococcus, you please remember, it is mostly to the joints with the pus and bumble foot. And we So, uh, just we are discussing about the uh, Subuchi Mamutansu. I guess I'm Subuchi. I guess. Full screen, hello, thank you. The full screen to ask you, sir. Man, slide to the screen.
आलोचना सालमोनेला पास्टोरेला माइकोप्लाज्मा रियो वायरस इकोलारिस सब ठीक कोन हुए ना जॉइंट तो हम को कोन करियो पडिवो दे यू हैव टू सी द एक्जुडेट्स प्रेजेंट एंड हियर इट इज मोस्टली ए सुपरेटिव फॉर्म सम टाइम्स आल्सो द स्टाफेलोकोकस कैन कॉज द सेप्टिसेमिया यू कैन फाइंड सेप्टिसेमिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ ए कारकस इन डिफरेंट ऑर्गन्स लाइक नेक्रोसिस इन द लिवर ऑल द थिंग्स इवन कंजेशन एंड हेमोरेजिक स्पॉट्स इन अदर ऑर्गन्स बट अनलेस यू वुड आइसोलेट एंड आइडेंटिफाई बैक्टीरिया फ्रॉम द फ्लूइड From the exudates, you cannot say it is a case of staphylococcus because there are so many diseases are there with all these swellings, fluid, exudates. So you will demonstrate the bacteria. Bacteria, you can demonstrate and you can see that. आपरे सेम दी सिमिलर आउट ऑफ दी स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस ड्यू एपिडेमिकस स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस पिकलिस अगेन आमे ई कोलर जो ओम्फालाइटिस देखितले फर्स्ट बुझैतली ऑन द वेरी फर्स्ट क्लास Sim streptococcus also can cause omphalitis in young chicks, so that you know how there will be once there will be omphalitis, you know enlarged spleen, enlarged liver, congestion of the carcass, fluid in the body cavity, that you can see. And sometimes strepto also can cause similarly. You, you just we are uh, we are discussing about the vegetative endocarditis here vegetative endocarditis in the heart valves also is is caused by streptococcus in animals also endocarditis salpingitis mishepova perihepatitis pericarditis arthritis so all air circulates almost e coli related pathology also you will find due to streptococcus so cultural examination is highly required whether it is a e coli or a streptococcus Many times, what happens? The diagnosis is not required because any antibiotic which is applied, whether it is E. coli or Streptococcus, so antibiotics will work for almost these type of bacteria together. So people do not know whether there is a E. coli infection or a Streptococcus infection. But for confirmation, to know the bacteria, you must go for a cultural examination. Then only you can say. So you can isolate the causal organism. Go to know. From blood, from liver, or spleen, जो तुम लोगों ने देखी थी तो मैं bacteria को demonstrate कर दिया। So in this way, हमारा almost bacterial disease we have covered. Almost all the bacterial diseases we have covered. Now, today, today, what are you going to do? 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 अल तमे किच ऑस्पिटल ने आई विल गिव एटेंडेंस अकॉर्डिंगली है ना आ सर सर एग्जाम रे तो कौन एनी एनी प्रॉब्लम कहाँ कौन पहुँच आ सर किचिटा वाने डिजीज अच्छी है जंतु की सर रिंडर पेस्ट रैपिस मैडका उसे सेटा पढ़ी भी पढ़ी भी चलाके लिस सेटा मुंह पढ़ी भी मुंह पढ़ी तो उसी रिंडर पेस्ट रैपिस मुंह इम 
जो टीचर मैंने शुण आज पर्यत जो टीचर मैंने जहाँ क्लास पढ़ाई क्वेश्चन विल बी प्रिपेयर्ड फ्रॉम दैट क्वेश्चन ओनली आगे कौन कह रहा है कमाल आ सर हैंडआउट ता पाई सर म आज डिपार्टमेंट सर डिपार्टमेंट जीवा दरकार नहीं मु तते एबे मेल रे पठाई दिछ आगे आगे सर ठीक अछि तू मते व्हाट्सएप रे तो मेल एड्रेस दे आगे सर आगे थैंक यू सर आ कोन कह रहा छि को पिले माने एनी अदर विदाउट अमृता सो आउ के कोन कह रहा छि को हम्म कार कौन प्रॉब्लम हो चुका है बिफोर द एग्जामिनेशन टुडे पर आप दिस विल बी द लास्ट क्लास बिफोर इंटरनल असेसमेंट ना कौन आओ छि क्लास अमन तंसु सर एटा लास्ट सर काले नै आओ तापर हमें मोर जहा पोर्शन बाकी हो छि आगे वाइल्ड लाइफ हो छि पोस्टमार्टम रिलेटेड हो छि तापर किछटा इंपोर्टेंट स्पेशल डिजीज हो छि तक मु पढै बेला आगे सर ठीक है चल हमें जीवा ओके लेट अस क्लोज यू कैन लीव